guys, welcome back to Prepping in Progress. I'm Steve. And I'm Kim. The hot chick. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And today we're going to be talking about winter EDC for your vehicle. And this is a response for NWA Prepper about winterizing your vehicle. So, as he would put it, let's get ready. Let's get ready. So, what is first on your list, Kim? Well, first on my list is if you're going to have to be in your car during winter. I, I hope you do have a plan, and you're planning things out. If you are camping in your vehicle, or using as a bug out vehicle, or if you're just stuck in the snow, having certain things in your vehicle for just emergency purposes. Uh, I'm learning a lot from Steve, who grew up in the great north of Nebraska, where this is a real issue. Uh, down here in the south, uh, we don't get a ton of snow. What we do get is a ton of ice. Your ice storms are frost. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're not used to it. <laughs> we do have really bad ice storms, though, where you can knock out power, and people do tend to go off the side of the road not being able to get their vehicles out, and they may be having to wait hours for tow vehicles or whatever, or to you know, somebody to come help you get out. So having emergency supplies in your vehicle that are specifically for winter, I think was a necessary part of <coughs> Don't mind Steve, he's sick again. <laughs> now when you say specifically for winter, this is in addition to your regular EDC yes. in your vehicle. Yes, this is all in addition to your, your EDC is your everyday carry for your vehicle. So your emergency kits such as your first aid kits, flashlights, flares, Anything that you know, your jumper cables, all of those should be in your vehicle anyways, year-round, EDC, everyday carry. These are more things that you would pop in there for winter time. You wouldn't necessarily need during the summer as much. Okay. More specialized for the different, you know, during the summer months you may be focusing on how to stay cool, and in the winter months you want to be focusing on how to stay warm. And your vehicle is not always the best place to do that at. It's probably even better to try to make something or if you can make it to some sort of shelter, that's better. But a lot of times, like I said, if you're waiting on a tow truck or if you're just stuck where you're at without cell signal, without any way to touch with anybody, and you just want to wait for the sun to come up, melt a little bit of that so you can get out. Staying overnight in your vehicle can be dangerous if you're not prepared. So. First on the list is warm clothing. Having gloves, scarves, earmuffs, a nice good jacket. Extra heavier gloves. Anything to help you layer up to stay warm because your vehicle is not the best thing about staying insulated. So you want to make sure you're insulating yourself with nuts and lots of layers. On top of that, we've got some nice good thick blankets that we're putting here. Brand new, good thick. Wool is better, but I find it kind of hard trying to find wool blankets. So if you can find wool blankets, it's even better. But I got these nice thick fleece blankets. Um, cotton, I do believe, tends to have a little bit more of uh, drawing in the uh, humidity, yeah. dampness, and it takes a lot longer for it to dry. So if you're dealing with snow. Wool wicks the water away from you. So if yeah. you have snow on you and it's melted, it helps. Definitely. But layering up with blankets and nice thick clothing, definitely a must. And you want to look at your thinsulates and your um, fibers when, and what you're wearing during the winter. Yeah, if you're used to going to work, say, in, you know, dress slacks, even dress slocks, not the slocks, socks, <laughs> or even just uh, pantyhose for women, uh, if you're, you know, traveling back and forth to work, having some extra wool socks. You know, some pants, some sweatpants, or something like that that you could possibly change into just in case you do get stuck somewhere. But layering up and making where you can insulate your body heat. Even if that's not the way you're dressing, you can keep it in your vehicle to change it into later. There you go. So, that's definitely first on the list is layering your body and having that supplies. Okay, next on our list is an old family friend of mine, the E tool, also known as the entrenching tool. Um, growing up in Nebraska, and for those of you further north, you understand this, having to dig snow out from around your tires if you have slid off the main road into even 
a couple of inches of snow and ice can bog down even a four-wheel drive and you're not going anywhere. Being able to dig out from around it is essential. Um, doesn't really matter if you're going to use the collapsible fold-up ones or one of these uh, small straight short shovels. They make uh, a great number of them and I have I heard a rumor that there is a company that would like us to field test one of theirs. That would be awesome, but I don't want to field test it with my vehicle though. <laughs> yeah. Now, I, I'm going to say something that because we're in the South, I really can't come up with some of the things that I grew up with. I grew up with cutting off uh, legs of jeans, sewing them up at each end, and filling them with sand, and using them as sandbags to throw underneath the tire. Oh, that's interesting. We would also get just regular, con you know, not concrete, but uh, mixing some bags of sand, and you put them in the back of your truck, not only for the weight to keep from spinning out, but when you got stuck, you would scoop it out, put it under the tire, and then you could pull out. Does that go <coughs> with our next item? Something for Ah, uh, yes. Very cheap thing of kitty litter. So we do have cats, so we do have kitty litter around the house. But this is just the cheapest bag that we could find. Rock salt also does really well as... That is an option. It takes a while for rock salt to actually melt in and get things dried out. And so kitty litter would be better? Both are viable, mm -hmm. but it just takes a while for it to act upon the snow and ice. And dig it out down to the ground and then put it down. So wait they work a, hand in hand. Wait a couple minutes. Okay. But I'm a big sand guy. Just. So, but if you're, like in us, we have the Suburban, they say instead of a pickup truck or something yeah. like that. So something that won't go getting scattered around everywhere. we got this great little tub to put in. So and, you know, down here in the south, you're not going to get find bags of sand at your local hardware store yeah, no. as e readily. So kitty litter would be just an easy way that you could just hop down to your local store, even just Dollar General or something, and buy just some yeah. cheap kitty litter that you could just keep in the back here just to add some traction to your tires. There you go. Kind of continuing with the shovel, um, some other Nebraska tools that I brought with me. <laughs> Um, she does not have this in her vehicle. I have it in mine. I have an actual tow logging chain. Uh, it's probably a good 20 feet long, bumper to bumper, and I keep a come along in my vehicle. I figure she doesn't really have the places to hook as easily as the Jeep does, and she can go, honey, help me, and I'll come in. <laughs> Jeep. It's what's for dinner. But uh, tow chains, come alongs, they can be a great asset when you're stuck, whether you're hooking up to a tree to pull yourself out or to another vehicle. I remember one time I was driving my Geo Tracker down Interstate 80 outside of Lincoln, Nebraska, and I got hit by wind, 360 into the ditch, and it took a pickup truck, one of those yellow stretchy tow cables because that's all we had and I come along to eventually pull that thing out. I think I actually pulled the guy's bumper off because I was <laughs> stuck and he wouldn't dig out before he started pulling. So, but having yeah. some way to either have somebody else tow you out or if you like I said a come along or a winch if you're looking up to have like a winch on top of the, in front of your jeans. Yeah, which we're working on soon, soon enough. <laughs> it's soon. on the list. But having some way to get some, you know, if you've got your traction, you've got the snow shoveled away from it, and you're still not able to get out, having a tow chain or come along to help you out, right? Yeah, awesome. absolutely. Awesome. Moving on to our next uh, items. Now, it's something that is technically EDC, is keeping food and water in your car, just in case you do get stranded somewhere. Tons of stories out there of people being able to survive being stranded in their vehicles because they kept food and water, whether it's winter, spring, or something. But with winterizing your vehicle, when you would normally keep your water possibly in plastic jugs... In full to the brim. <laughs> we're going to be switching over to insulated mugs. Now, the biggest problem with the plastic jugs is freezing temperatures, and the plastic 
begins to crack. And then if it's got, got water everywhere or ice, that will eventually melt and go everywhere. So if it's being left in your car overnight, just so you don't have to take it in and out, in and out. You can still use these if this is all you have, but I would definitely maybe take some of the water out. That way if it freezes and expands, you're not busting the jug. But it's not going to do you much good either if you've got frozen water and not being able to get drinks out of it and everything. So I would definitely, like I said, we're switching over to, for winter, having our insulated mugs. Now a lot of people use these for like coffee and things like that, but just even just keeping water in there, even if they do freeze a little bit, which they're insulated so I don't see them freezing very much because even in freezing temperatures, I don't think they're going to freeze. Um, but they're not going to crack and bust open like your plastic water bottles. So we're going to be using these. We're still not going to fill them up to the brim just in case it expands. You don't want it messing it up. But I think these are going to be a lot better. And they're not going to leach like the, the plastic will if it does get hot. The plastic tends to get in and make the water have a plastic, plasticky Days. flavor to it. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Because that is a controlled, uh, sealed environment, mm -hmm. if it starts to swell because of freezing, do you are you going to leave it cracked just a bit? Yeah, or? you can leave it cracked. They say you can leave the lids cracked. Oh, I dropped one. You can leave the lids cracked, um, but honestly, we're just not going to fill it up all the way. We're probably going to get just as some head space to it. Okay. And just that way we can just we can rotate it out a little bit easier. We can take it in every, every once in a while and just changing out the water. So, Ozark plastic bottles are out. <laughs> It'll be just taken inside. Steel bottles are in. There we go. But like I said, and also making sure, having some food, you know, we keep MREs in the car anyways, uh, but having some in your car, that doesn't require you getting out, making a fire somewhere. You can just, if you're sitting there, like I said, waiting on a tow truck, it could be an all-night thing. Having enough for you and your kids to sit down and have a warm meal. Like I said, MREs, you just had a little bit of the water to without having to start a fire or anything. You know, I know they're a little bit bulky for carrying, say, in a bug out bag, but in the vehicle, it shouldn't be any problem to keep a few of these. And I say at least one MRE per family member. So. And keep in mind that some of them, they need salt water to um, activate, and the little salt water packet is inside. Everything should be self-contained right here. And it's a warmer as well because yes, it, it stays is. hot after it's, it's done. And in that, having hot food in yeah. your system will keep warm you up from the inside out. So if you're trying to stay warm, having a hot meal is definitely going to help. One thing to remember to keep inside your vehicle, especially if you're going back and forth to work and say you're in dress attire. You know, me it's no big deal because where I work, I wear boots. And so, but if you are used to being like business casual or just wearing tennis shoes or something like that to work, Keep a pair of boots, work boots, galoshes, something that if you're out having to dig out around your tires, putting on heavy litter, getting the tow chain, getting the, walking around, whatever it may be, having a pair of slacks and dress shoes is not going to make life very easy for you. Okay, she's being nice and delicate. Ladies, you don't want to have to break the heels off of your Louis Vuitton high heels in order to work on your car and dig it out. Exactly. And I do. I'm wearing dress boots right now as we're getting ready to go out to dinner in a little bit. And that's a lot of people, if they're getting ready to go somewhere, a lot of times they want to dress up and dress nice, but they're not the greatest work boots. Yes. So keeping just an old pair, this is just an old pair of hiking boots that I had laying around, and they're just perfect. So just throw it in there. They're nice, warmly insulated, they're waterproof, so if I'm not having to dig out snow and use a come along, or even having to hike out from where I'm at, I've got something to change into. There you go. And last but not least, what are we talking about? Being in your car is kind of risky because your car is not a house. Uh, yes, it's great for getting out of the rain, getting out of the snow so you're not cold and wet, but your car is not properly insulated for retaining heat. And a lot of people have froze to death in their vehicles because they thought that was the safest place. Do we need to go back to griping about our last book review? Yes. <laughs> if you haven't watched it, I griped a lot about that. And breaking out windows and climbing into a car. I mean, I get it for, like I said, getting out of the way. Because the last thing you want to do is be cold and wet. But the car is not made to be... <laughs> 
there is no insulation between your door panels. I mean, you can tell when you get into your vehicle in the morning. Touch the windows. They're freezing. They're freezing cold. You get ice on your windshields, everything like that, because it's not really insulating it very well. So having a way to insulate your car if you're having to stay there overnight, especially, say, in a snowstorm or a blizzard or something like that, where you're going to risk freezing death. you got below freezing temperatures that you're going to be exposed to for a long period of time, you need to have a way to at least keep most of the heat. Now, one thing that we found was the sun shields. If you're in the summertime, uh, that keeps the, the sun out of your windows. Keeping that up and doing it across your windshield, just keep it in there from summertime, but you can put that up uh, to help, because most of them have a reflective side. You can put that up to help reflect some of the heat back that way. We're talking about reversing it so that the reflecting side is toward you and radiating the heat back toward you. And on that same lens, you can cut them up and use them for the rest of your windows as well, even pre-cutting them, yeah. or even finding any kind of insulation like uh, sheets that you want to come up with. Like oh, that. those those thick board sheets yeah. and pre-cut them for pre -cut your window them size. Pre-cut them for your window size yeah. and keep them in your vehicle. But I even found the emergency blankets. Pretty easy. These were three bucks a dollar for a pretty good size emergency blanket. Because I have a lot of windows in my suburban. I don't know how many y'all have, so I've got probably three or four of these because I'm not I'm sure how big they're going to be. I'm going to take these out and some duct tape, and I'm going to put these up on my windows to help reflect some of the heat back inside so it's not going to escape through the windows. Now keep like, in mind where she's going with this is she's expecting either a rescue or a tow in a short while. We are not recommending staying in your vehicle for two to three days <laughs> no. or, you know, this is emergency, <coughs> last minute, you have nowhere else to go at the time, you're waiting for a tow, you're waiting for sun to come up so you can get to hiking out, whatever it may be, but a good way to at least have some of the heat reflected back yeah. onto you, like I said, if, especially if you've got the whole family in there, the body heat from the entire family, it'd be like wrapping y'all all up in a big reflective blanket, and hopefully keeping a lot of it inside. I see, I'm remembering a couple years ago I took the Hummer up to on top of the uh -huh. mountain and I ended up on a road that was closed and I slid off the road thankfully not the down cliff side but toward the wall uh -huh. managed to back out and get out and I made it out but I was looking at the fact that I might have to stay overnight up there and there was no way I was staying in the vehicle I was going to build a shelter and start a fire because fire keeps warm I was above the snow line <laughs> Hand warmers. Hand warmers. These do last a very long time, and you can buy them in bulk. And I, I used them the other day when we were at the range. Put those in my pockets, and it, I, I was showing Stephen, like, here, it's like 12 hours later, and this thing's still hot. <laughs> you know? So they're curled up with it. Uh, they really do last a good long time, especially if you get, like, the jumbo ones, the big ones. Um, but you can have these, give them out to everybody, so they can put them in strategic spots. Or as an EMT, you would know where to put them underneath the arms, right? Well, let's let, let's just throw that out. Uh, armpits, your groin area, mm -hmm. um, even around your stomach. Think of it as major blood vessel areas, major okay. major veins and keep arteries to keep the blood flowing and circulating warmly. Okay. So, so you don't freeze. Correct. Okay. So high-end warmers, definitely, I'd pick up one package for each family member myself because you don't know how long they're going to last. You might have to pull out a few extras to last you all night. But if you do get stuck somewhere, having a way to generate more heat than just body heat, between that, warm clothing, all of the nice blankets that you've got, hand warmers and then insulating your windows, you should be able to survive tonight, no problem. But like Steve said, do not count this as a way to have multiple nights over and over and over again to be able to stay in your vehicle because your car is just not made for that. If you're looking for a long term, you need to find good shelter quickly. This over the windows is not good shelter for, you know, really even overnight. I mean, you can, depending, but at 32 degrees or less, I wouldn't be doing it. I'd be looking for an actual built shelter, solid walls, place where I, I can do a fire. Definitely. Yeah. And cut them to the windows. Nothing. Uh, but as that a, would be fun to try and play with. Yeah, but as a temporary, yeah. just a cheap way to just get some heat reflected back, I think it might work. 
It might work. Yeah, I think well, it, it actually it. would. I'd have to try it out. Go on on like the coldest night in Camping with you in the suburban. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, guys, and an easy way. Don't think this is going to clutter up real bad. Uh, I found this really cool little holder that I just put on the back of my neck. And then just like I said, a little tub that all this is going to go in there. And boom. It won't take up too much room at all. Except that for these. Are, these are coming are, out. Those are from the summer. They're coming out. And so we're going to be switching over to the other models. But guys, I hope this helped. Uh, NWA, I hope that, that this was a pretty good response uh, to your challenge. And so we're going to get out of here and hopefully not go freeze to death. And so <laughs> there you go. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you soon.